Hi. Today we're going to be talking about how to get off your terraform. I am Priyanka Ravi. I also go by Pinky, and I am a developer experience engineer at Weaveworks. If you have not heard of us, we are a startup with a globally distributed and remote workforce. A lot of what we do is based on open source. You might have heard of our projects Flux and Flagger, which are in the CNCF as incubating projects. Flux was also the project that really kicked off the term GitOps, and it's been really cool to see lots of adopters of the project and see the community grow over the last few years. So much so that large cloud vendors and other organizations like Microsoft, AWS, VMware, and others have adopted it and are using it under the hood to offer GitOps to their customers. Cortex is another one of our projects that is in the CNCF that helps make Prometheus scalable. I mention that because Prometheus is a key part of the progressive delivery possibilities with Flagger. And of course, we have other projects like Weave Ignite, EKS Cuddle, and now Weave GitOps, which is also a free and open source tool that provides GitOps for your various needs and has a UI on top of Flux. And we have many more. So if you're definitely, if you're interested, definitely check us out on GitHub under Weaveworks as well as in the CNCF where you can find our projects. So. What is GitOps? GitOps is an operating model for cloud native applications such as Kubernetes. I do want to highlight that it's not just for Kubernetes. Um, if you are using, doing a multi-cloud infrastructure, you can still use GitOps. Um, and we'll be talking about that obviously more in detail today. Uh, GitOps utilizes a version control system, most commonly Git, as the single source of truth. It enables continuous delivery through automated deployment, monitoring, and management by a version controlled system. And with GitOps, you're managing your infrastructure and applications declaratively. So um, these are the GitOps principles are a set of best practices. They have been defined through discussions with many different vendors and users, um, experiences by the GitOps working group. And if you want to learn more about the GitOps working group, you can go to opengitops.dev. And uh, don't feel like you have to have all of them met in order to use GitOps. Everyone's journey looks different and you can start using GitOps and add in hardening and tweak your setup to meet these guidelines as you go. So the first one is that a system managed by GitOps must have its desired state expressed declaratively. It's written in code, um, so it's more reusable. There's an audit trail and a lot of other benefits that come with that. The second is that a desired state is stored in a way that enforces immutability, versioning, and retains a complete version history. So there's no sneaking in a change, and it kind of goes back to the audit trail stuff too. The third is that software agents automatically pull the desired state declarations from the source. And the fourth is that software agents continuously observe actual system state and attempt to apply the desired state. So you have so an operator such as Flux that is um, automatically continuously pulling in the uh, actual system state and making sure that it is um, what you have expressed declaratively. So why GitOps? There are so many benefits to GitOps. Um, and you know, individuals, teams, and organizations who implement GitOps experience many benefits. I myself, um, at my previous company, uh, was on a team that implemented GitOps using Flux, and we did see a lot of these benefits, um, including stronger security guarantees, increased developer and operational productivity, and enhanced developer experience, improved stability, higher reliability, and a consistency in standardization. Because of um, GitOps' unique ability to treat everything as code, um, it creates a direct impact on security. For example, if all configuration and security policy is treated as code, then everything can be held in version control. And so any and all changes can be made, reviewed, and uh, inputted into an automated way. There's no manual processes, so you're less likely to be at work on a weekend. So what is Flux? Flux is a Git-centric package manager for your applications, but Git isn't the only system you can use, and it provides a set of continuous and progressive delivery solutions for Kubernetes. It is a natural extension of the benefits of Kubernetes. 
At the core of it, it continuously monitors your version control system and it applies the desired state that's been declaratively stated there. The nice part of this is that you don't have to worry about configuration drift because it reconciles on a schedule. So if things have gotten out of sync for some reason, it will set it back to the desired state. Flux really reduces developer burden because it removes the need for manual deployment processes. And the Flux command line tool is a convenient way to bootstrap the system in a cluster and to access the custom resources that make up the API. So these are some statements that we like to um, put out there about Flux and to really showcase what's really awesome about Flux. Flux provides GitOps for both apps and infrastructure. Using Flux and Flagger, you can deploy apps with canaries, feature flags, and AB rollouts. Flux can also manage any Kubernetes resource and infrastructure and workload dependency management is built in. You just push to Git and Flux does the rest. Flux manages deployments through automatic reconciliation. Flux also works with your existing tools. Flux works with your Git providers, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. You can even use S3 compatible buckets as a source. All major container registries and all CI workflow providers as well. Flux works with any Kubernetes and all common Kubernetes tooling. Customize, Helm, RBAC, and policy-driven validation, such as OPA, Kyverno, admission controllers. So it simply falls into place. Flux does multi-tenancy, and as we like to say, multi-everything. Flux uses true Kubernetes RBAC via impersonation and supports multiple Git repositories. Multi-cluster infrastructure and apps work out of the box with Cluster API. Flux can use one cluster, Kubernetes cluster to manage apps in either the same or in other clusters, spin up additional clusters themselves, and manage clusters including lifecycle and fleets. It also alerts and notifies. Flux provides health assessments, alerting to external systems, and external events handling. You just get push and get notified on Slack and other chat systems, and I'm going to actually be showing that in our demo today. Users trust Flux. Um, take myself as a user. I, I definitely trust Flux, and hopefully you'll see throughout this talk why users do trust Flux. Flux has a lovely community that is very easy to work with. Um, we welcome contributors of any kind. The components of Flux are on Kubernetes core controller runtime, so anyone can contribute, and its functionality can be extended very easily. So what are the benefits of Flux? Flux reduces developer burden. It removes the cube control problem. You don't have to worry about cube controlled versions to be able to interact with the cluster. It's also extensible, versatile, it works with existing tools, um, it's flexible and modular, and it's a natural extension of Kubernetes. And it's also um, extendable. Because of the microservice architecture, you can basically pick and choose what you want to use to tailor your own experience. So, like I mentioned, Flux has a microservice architecture. It's a set of Kubernetes controllers. And if you're not familiar with controllers, a controller handles the life cycle of objects in Kubernetes. What should be done when an object is created, updated, deleted, etc. And um, the Terraform controller is not uh, officially a Flux controller. It is an add-on that was created by Weaveworks. But the controllers that uh, make up Flux are the source controller, the customized controller, the helm controller, the notification controller, the image reflector controller, and the image automation controller. The source controller fetches resources and stores them as artifacts. It, uh, the main role of it is to provide a common interface for artifacts acquisition. The customized controller is a Kubernetes operator specialized in running continuous delivery pipelines for infrastructure and workloads defined with Kubernetes manifests and assembled with customize. The Helm controller is a Kubernetes operator allowing one to declaratively manage Helm chart releases with Kubernetes manifests. The notification controller is a Kubernetes operator specialized in handling inbound and outbound events. And the um, image reflector controller and image automation controller work together to update a Git repository when new container images are available. Yeah, so Flux works with tons of other tools. Um, these are just a few, and then there's a lot more as well. So basically, anything that you're really working with, um, Flux will work nicely with as well. Okay, so.
So, uh, reasons why I and others love Flux. I myself, as a previous user of Flux, that I just come up with a little list of the reasons that I really um, adore Flux. And one is that it really just makes life easier. Getting your application to production is the entire goal of the development life cycle. Flux is a tool that was created to make the process simpler and more efficient. It gives developers the ability to focus on what really matters most, innovation and the user experience. Also, multi-tenancy is really awesome with Flux. Um, in my experience, it's very uh, easy to set up and um, convenient to keep working. So there's also a really neat feature called Depends On, where you can tell Flux to wait until something is up and ready to actually stand up the next piece. So if you had an API that required um, a database to be stood up, you could tell it that. Um, also, Helm integration is really fantastic with Flux. Um, and the notifications and alerting is really easy to set up. I myself did it earlier today and it was really, really easy to set up. Um, bootstrapping is a really cool way to get started with Flux, which is part of the Flux CLI. And the Flux CLI is a super, super user-friendly um, way to integrate with, to interact with Flux. And um, now the Terraform controller, another awesome reason to love Flux as well. So what is the Terraform controller? The Terraform controller is a Flux controller that was created by Weaveworks that can manage Terraform resources. It, um, and, and these Terraform resources that can be managed by it are not limited to Kubernetes resources, which brings us back to that multi-cloud um, option I was mentioning earlier. And so you can, these are a few links where you can find um, the Terraform controller on GitHub. There are some really awesome Terraform controller docs out there as well. Um, and in, in those docs, there is like an awesome list of use cases that we're going to go over in a little bit too. So what are the benefits of the Terraform controller? Um, one benefit is that you can have full GitOps automation. GitOps, um, you can use now GitOps for existing Terraform resources. Um, you can use GitOps to plan and manually apply Terraform. Also, you can use um, the Terraform controller to do drift detection of Terraform resources, and I'm gonna mention that in a little bit, but you can also use it to just notify you of, of any drift detection that happens, even if you're not using it to apply your Terraform. And it can be used as a glue for Terraform resources and Kubernetes workloads. There are lots of cool features of the Terraform controller to be excited about. Um, and there are new ones coming out every day, so keep an eye on that guide that I mentioned a bit ago. Um, one such feature is the ability to set manual or auto approvals. With auto approvals, if you make a change in Git, then the change will be automatically realized um, by the Terraform controller. If you set it up to do manual approvals, then it will create a plan, but it will not automatically apply the change. And so you can... Um, see the plan and decide whether you want to make the change. And um, there's a new feature now to actually output that plan into a config map. And I will show that in um, my demo. Another feature is drift detection. And with drift detection, you don't have to worry about configuration drift. It ensures that you have um, what you actually have declared in your Terraform is what is actually live. And you can also use drift detection only and tell the Terraform controller to skip the plan and apply. So if you're already deploying your Terraform in some other way and want to just get the benefits of being notified when something gets out of sync, then you can do that as well. And I am going to show in the demo um, an example of um, getting notifications for drift detection. And another feature is that um, the Terraform controller actually accepts a list of config maps and secrets as variables. So you can use um, those to input as uh, variables into your Terraform. Also, um, a state file by default is stored in a secret for your Terraform, but um, you can actually uh, set the backend um, to be whatever you want. And also, there um, are health checks that you can set. And so for some resources, it may be helpful to perform health checks on them to verify that they are ready to accept connection before the Terraform goes into a ready state. 
and you can also destroy resources on deletion. Um, that is not the default action of the Terraform controller. So if a Terraform object is deleted from the cluster, the resources created by Terraform are not deleted, defaulted to be destroyed. Um, to enable that, you can set a flag um, to true. And uh, another feature is that you can actually write outputs to a secret. And um, you can specify a target secret, and the controller will write all outputs to the secret by default. And you can, or you can also write outputs selectively to a secret. And um, there's also name mapping and other features as well. Um, so uh, the Terraform controller team is really excited to announce that the performance of the Terraform controller has been improved significantly. Now the controller is greatly scalable to reconcile and provision high volumes of Terraform modules concurrently. And um, the team has actually tested the controller with 1500 Terraform modules. And so um, with that change, uh, you can actually customize your runner pod as well. Uh, you can um, uh, Update the image if you want to, um, if you have any need to include certain things in your Terraform image, um, runner, Terraform runner image, uh, and also um, you can config some pod specs as well. Recently, OCI support has been added to Flux, and the Terraform controller has been updated to um, reflect those changes as well. So the Terraform controller can also use OCI artifacts as a source. Um, another thing is the ability to force unlock Terraform state. And uh, by default, this is not enabled. And so if you um, do want to use it, you can check out how to do that in the guide. And um, we're also very excited to um, say that there is Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise integration as well. And that is also in our guide if you want to check out how to use um, the Terraform controller with those as well. All right, so now I'm going to switch over to a demo to show you guys the Terraform controller in action. Okay, so we're gonna be standing up an instance of Vault using Flux, and then we're gonna be using Terraform to configure that um, Vault instance, such as adding a secret and adding policies. Um, and so uh, we're gonna be using this repository that was forked from a project that Russ created uh, in order to show a demo of Vault with Flux. And so in here, in this make file, um, you can see that it's gonna create a kind cluster, and then it's going to be running this Flux bootstrap um, GitHub command. And so this Flux bootstrap command is um, going to create, is, is basically the easiest way to stand up um, Flux in your cluster. And um, if, if the, in this case, we're actually standing it up in a repo that already exists, but if you Flux, did a Flux bootstrap and the repo didn't exist, it would create you a brand new repo and then push up all the manifests that the controllers and everything um, for Flux needs into that new repository. Okay, now that um, the bootstrap command is done, we can run a cube control get pods dash n flux system and see the um, pods that were stood up there. So you can see here that there are the controllers that were stood up. And um, by default, the Terraform controller does not come with bootstrap, but uh, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how that was stood up in just a second. So the GOTK components YAML is what's created by Bootstrap and it has the namespace, um, the Flux system namespace, it has custom resource definitions, all of the manifests for all the controllers and things like that. GOTK sync is where we have the um, Git repository source. So this is telling the source controller to listen to this Git repository Flux vault demo. And every minute it's gonna go in and um, check, uh, pull the manifests and make sure there's no changes. And then the customization is telling the customization controller to then apply the files that are found in um, the cluster's kind folder every 10 minutes. And so it, it's gonna apply whatever is pulled in by the source um, 
repo in the, that folder. And so if we go in there, if we go into that folder, we can see that there's also this apps.yaml file, which is gonna be applied as well. And this is another customization that's then pointing to this base apps folder. If we go into there, we can see that this is where the Terraform controller and Vault are being stood up. So in here, this Helm repository is pointing to the um, TF controller Helm repository, and this is the Helm repository source that's created for the um, yeah for the Terraform controller. It's being pulled every five minutes, and then the Helm release is what actually defines what the chart is going to look like. So this is telling um, the the chart um, specs. It's saying the version of the chart that you want to be stood up. And it also has the values that you um, want, that you set for the um, Helm chart. And so this is telling the Helm controller to um, go uh, apply this chart and then every one hour to go and then um, update it. So in the, um, uh, there's also the vault uh, instance that's being stood up in, in the same way. It's a, it's a Helm chart as well. And so that's just the basic instance of Vault that's being stood up. So now we're going to go into um, VS Code and we're going to apply this secret.yaml. And this is basically just to apply the secret that points to the um, webhook address for Slack. And um, I learned this the hard way, but if you push a um, web hook, a Slack webhook into a public GitHub, then it will actually delete it from Slack. So that's why we're applying it here. And then we're just gonna delete this so we don't commit it to Git. And um, we're gonna now go into um, actually add in the uh, Terraform, the notifications for the Terraform controller. So. The first thing we need to do is um, add in some patches to tell the um, notification controller to also listen to Terraform um, uh, events as well. And uh, not just the ones that come default with Flux. So this is something you'd have to do if you were adding in a third party controller support for the notifications. And so we're gonna push that. And then um, I'm gonna show you what that what's in that actual Terraform notifications YAML that we just added to the customization. So this is the provider that's created um, for the notification controller. It's pointing to that Slack webhook um, secret ref that we just told it. So it's gonna listen to that Slack um, webhook and then it's going to um, uh, also be listening for Terraform events. So that's what the alert is saying here as well. So if there's any Terraform events, all, all Terraform events, then um, alert us in Slack. Okay, so now we're gonna um, reconcile the um, the Git source, the flux system Git source that's pointing to that um, repository. And it's gonna realize that there's been a change that's been made and it'll um, also trigger the customization to then run a um, apply as well because there's been a change. Okay, so now we're going to go in and actually um, add the the terraform object now so this is what the terraform controller will it, this is what is telling the terraform controller to um, then go and actually apply those terraform files that are going to be customizing the vault instance so let's um, commit this change add this this back in and so what you can see here is it's telling it every minute to go and apply the Terraform files that are found in this base Terraform Kate's vault config path. And it's pointing to the same source ref too. Oh, and, and here, um, because the approved plan is empty, it's going to require manual approvals and the store readable plan in human is telling it to um, uh, output the 
plan into a config map. And so in here we can see um, that this is the Terraform that we just told that Terraform object to point to. So this is the Terraform that the uh, Terraform controller is gonna be applying. And it has policies, it has a pass, uh, a secret that's created and, um, and all of that. So we are going to now reconcile um, flux system again, the flux system source to pick up the change we just added. Okay, now that we've done that, we can run a um, cube control get terraform in the flux system namespace and we sh will now see that there has been a k8 vault config terraform object stood up and so if we go into slack we can see and it, so if we go into slack we can see that there is a um, terraform plan that was generated in this general uh, thing. So if we take, it tells us that we can set a proof plan to this um, string in order to actually approve the plan. So we'll go in here. And we will add this in. We'll set that here and then we will um, Oh, right, okay, so I'm gonna do a cube control get config maps first to show you the um, the config map that was created with the Terraform plan. And it, that way we can actually check that the plan is what we want and I can show you guys how to um, look at, check for your config map. So in here you can see that um, the plan is all listed out here, it has, it's, if you're familiar with Terraform, you're very familiar with like a Terraform plan. It shows you all the things that are going to be added. Um, and so now we can go in and commit that change to um, approve the plan. So now the plan will be applied. And so if we go back and reconcile it again, um, we can make sure that that apply is being taken care of. So if we go back and get Terraform, it takes a second. <laughs> but if we give it a minute, we'll see that it actually, there you go, it's already standing up. So if we go back, we can see that now it says that it's applied successfully. And so now I'm gonna go in and I am going to update the um, file to do auto um, approve approvals. And I'm going to remove the um, store readable plan as well. So now if a change is made, it will automatically apply those changes. So there's no more need for me to um, look at the plan and then manually apply it. or manually approve it. <laughs> it's still getting applied automatically. So now we're gonna reconcile again. Okay, so now I am going to log into the um, local vault instance that we created. And I'm just going to enter the token that was uh, set up, it's just root. And then um, we can see in here that the creds password uh, secret was created, the one that's in that Terraform code. And so I'm gonna be a bad actor and I'm gonna go delete it to show you the drift detection. And um, so in here now you can see the notification in Slack that tells me that there was a drift detected and that the secret has, or the, yeah, the secret has been deleted. And um, so this is great, you know, to show y'all what it would look like to get a notification if um, for some reason things got out of sync. And so now if we go back in here and refresh and I retype it in, creds are back because the, um, the uh, Terraform controller set it back up when it noticed that there was a configuration drift. It reapplied the Terraform. So that's it.
um, for the demo. And um, thank you so much for listening to me talk about the Terraform controller. We are very excited about this edition. And um, please give it a try and let us know your experience on the CNCF uh, Flux Slack channel. And um, here are a few links for you to check out. We have a Weave online user group that also meets um, regularly and has different talks about the different uh, tools that we are using or integrate with Flux. And please check out Flux on GitHub and give us a star on both the Terraform controller GitHub and the Flux GitHub as well. Thank you.